And right, so everybody, hello and welcome to the launch event of the new philosophy and theory and philosophy of education network for CIRA. Contrary to what it says on the screen, I am not Nicola Kars. I am actually Angela Jap, and I am the vice president of CIRA. So I'm delighted to welcome everybody today. But I'm particularly delighted to welcome Philip and David, who are the leads. Right, right. So I'm going to hand over to Philip and David, and they'll talk you through what will happen for this afternoon. Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, Angela, thank you very much. And the first thing I'd like to say is, to, is, to, uh, is a thank you to yourself um, and Nicola and everyone at CIRA for their, for their help getting ready and set up for today. Both David and I are very, are very grateful for, for that. Um, yeah, so uh, my name is Philip Torner. I'm a, a lecturer uh, in the School of Education at the University of Glasgow. And um, I'm delighted to welcome you to this event today, uh, the launch event of our Theory and Philosophy of Education CIRA Network. Um, David and I uh, have worked together for a, a few years uh, and have talked about the, the possibility of creating a space for this, uh, discussing issues, uh, you know, theoretical issues and philosophical issues uh, connecting to education and the, 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 the broad area of, of learning and, and so on. So we, we decided to uh, approach colleagues through who might be interested in, in creating a, a CIRA network and they also thought that there was call for a, a place to meet and discuss these ideas. Um, and so we, we put that forward. Uh, Stephen McKinney um, gave, gave me some good advice early on as to how to get that started. So I'm very grateful to him for that. And um, we got our network up and running and here we are uh, at a launch event for it through CIRA Connects. So um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll hand over to David now and I'll move the slides on um, so that you can see some of the, the, the thinking that's gone into planning this event. I will not leave that up for too long and then I'll move on to the agenda. But um, David, you can maybe just give me a, a nod when you want me to, to move the slides on. So I'll hand over to David Lewin, um, who's going to say a wee bit about, uh, I'll continue things on from here. Thanks, David. Okay, thanks, Philip. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, my name is David Lewin. I'm, I'm a senior lecturer at uh, Strathclyde in, in philosophy of education. Um, I just want to echo um, Philip's um, thanks to CIRA. They've done an amazing job of organising these these events and sort of you know, giving it the, the momentum. And thanks everybody for coming. I'm sort of excited that quite a lot of people are interested and engaged in, in the topic of theory and philosophy of education um, as, as we're going to or at least interested enough to find out on a, and come on a Thursday afternoon at this time. So, so thanks a lot for coming along. Um, I suppose I might also mention my other role, which is related but different, and it's that I'm the secretary, the general secretary for the Philosophy of Education Society of Great Britain, uh, which reaches, um, you know, obviously across the whole of, of Great Britain and. Um, and as part of the, the PSGB, which some of you I know will be aware of, as part of the PSGB, we also have a, a regional uh, branches. And, and up to, you know, up to March, we would have had uh, visitors giving talks and so forth. So we also run a Strathclyde Glasgow a PSGB branch uh, between myself and Philip. So I thought I'd mention that as well. Um, yeah, maybe we should uh, uh, go on, well, um, to the next uh, slide. I mean, that, that, the, the first slide was just to introduce and what, what we sent out in the email. Um, so what we are as a, as a network really is, is just a friendly, informal uh, group of people interested in theory and philosophy. And I wanted to just say that we think of these things quite broadly, in, in other words, um, although there's a quite a sort of established sort of discourse of philosophy of education in, in, in the UK, we certainly want to broaden that out and be uh, including people who just uh, work in theory more generally and don't perhaps see themselves as, as, as philosophy people or, or necessarily people engaging in philosophy. Um, but what that means for us, I guess, is first of all, just reflecting on the nature and purposes of education quite generally, um, and also perhaps bringing to light some of the tensions and contradictions and conflicts around um, educational theory, policy and practice uh, in general. Um, and another thing I wanted to say in terms of presentation and what we are is that we have quite a broad concept of education. Um, certainly not limited to the institutions of schools, of, of universities and, and colleges, but 
Uh, we think of education to include um, parenting, community education, lifelong learning, self-education, um, the development uh, of selves in, in more general terms. Which brings me to another point, which sometimes theory and philosophy is perceived to be in contrast to uh, practice, as though you know, one group of researchers are interested in practice and we might be interested in theory and philosophy uh, uh, separate from practice. And that's not at all how we want to present or think about what we do. Rather, um, we would prefer to think of our work in relation to different kinds of practice. In other words, where, where many of, many of uh, CIRA members I know are interested in, in um, teacher education and schooling and, and maybe higher education and different elements of that. Um, but there is also practice out, out with those contexts, you know, what it means to practically educate yourself, what it means to be practically involved in lifelong learning. Um, and just the lived experience of, of education in general or, or, or general uh, uh, human development. So a broad concept of education. Um, when we were thinking about this, we were also conscious of the fact that across Scotland, there are 15 universities. Um, and perhaps, uh, I, I, I don't know if, uh, if this is the case, but in some, pla in some places, the, the, the uh, context for theory and philosophy might be clearer than in other cases. And, and if our network can be of use supporting the place of theory and philosophy within schools of education across Scotland, we certainly would want to do that. Uh, so we certainly want to kind of ensure that the, the place for theory and philosophy in education is understood and accepted and supported uh, across Scotland. And finally, another po point that we wanted to mention was that as, as part of having a network, we have access to a small amount of STIRA funding, which is fantastic, um, which will probably be used, I think, to host events, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, depending on circumstances uh, and, and uh, social distancing and all the rest of it. Um, the Philosophy of Education Society also supports those events, and I hope we can find a way to network with and sort of mutually support uh, between those organisations. Um, the uh, CIRA itself uh, set certain expectations, or, or should I say, when we developed the network, we presented uh, some ideas about what we want to do. And I'll just quickly go through those. Um, and I guess they relate to uh, some of the points on the slide here, uh, being collegial, research collaboration, conferences and, and symposia and so forth. So we, we wanted, we want to develop at least one network symposium or a network paper at the CIRA annual conference. Now, there isn't one this year, uh, at least not a, a physical conference, um, but in November 2021, there'll be the conference in Aberdeen, I believe. So uh, we want to sort of plan towards that. Uh, we also would like to think about or support or um, invite interest in developing a proposal for a special issue for the Scottish Educational Review. Uh, we don't have a timetable on that as yet, but it's certainly something that we are thinking about. In relation to those activities, we want to initiate and support network meetings. Now that might be situated in Glasgow, Edinburgh, uh, or, or further afield. Um, but since, uh, um, since it starts with us, uh, Philip and, and myself in, here in Glasgow, I guess that's where we, we probably will, will have the first a physical meeting when, when, when that uh, opportunity presents itself. Um, and may I also add that, that there are potential links with sort of a range of organisations that certainly I think Philip and myself have been involved with over the years. ESA is a really good um, uh, European conference that, that we're regular attenders at, um, but but there's a whole host of different organizations that are interested specifically in philosophy and theory of education. Um, so uh, there's the PES in America, the Philosophy of Education Society, there's the International Network of Philosophy of Education, and, and on and on. Um, I won't list them all now, but, but, but just to let you know that, that there are those networks that we want to uh, uh, develop. So, uh, will I move the slides on, David? Uh, 
I've, I've mentioned symposia uh, for conferences, uh, uh, which will hopefully lead uh, going forward to issues of a common uh, process and see what sort of opportunities there are to look, uh, apply to grants. Um, so at the moment, um, we're looking at speed. Um, so if people are interested in that, we want to basically network of let's say let's call it expertise or support or discussion that that we could uh, we could collaborate on uh, on grants as well. Um, so I think the uh, next slide uh, talks about if I'm if I, if I have it right the uh, broad themes or at least some of the collaborative themes that we have been uh, talking about and when we uh, uh, um, talked about the. Uh, the, the network initially. I should say that when we had the idea of the network, we sort of met in cafes, chatted over coffees, and we intend to do that again, um, a very fruitful way of working, we find. In general, we have a particular interest in um, uh, reaching out, I suppose, to people involved in teacher education across Scotland. It's probably the case that many of us here are at least peripherally or maybe direct, uh, very centrally involved in teacher education. And it's um, no surprise really that uh, some theorization and philosophical thinking about the, uh, the nature and purpose and, and, and uh, processes of teacher education uh, might be something that, that uh, people here would be interested in. Um, so, so that's something I think we wanted to highlight today was that, yes, uh, that's some, although I suppose neither Philip and I work, or you feel it does work in teacher education much more than I do, but our research may not be directly involved in that. I think it's something that we're very conscious of as, a, as an area of, of interest for, uh, as a research theme. Um, the next point um, I have there is understanding educational equality. Now, I'm just going to start by mentioning the fact, and hopefully you know about this, that um, some colleagues at Strathclyde, um, Carsten Kenkleys, Paul Adams and myself, have organised a conference which was supposed to run uh, last week or around a couple of weeks ago, but of course it had to be postponed uh, now till next year. So it's going to be, I think, uh, September, end of August, uh, September next year, about reframing educational equity. So anyway, in general, the question of Educational equity is, of course, a big discussion in Scottish education. We feel that there is a really important set of questions um, that theory and philosophy should address to that issue. And so we wanted again to highlight that. Um, uh, the third point is, is relevant, but this way, these are just 10 but we just wanted to start a conversation really so we uh, came up with a few. Um, theorizing online pedagogy is something interested in again uh, from a uh, philosophical point of view given again the circumstances where we find ourselves. Uh, I did I was on of interest what were the scope and limits of of online pedagogy and, and where isn't it um and i think we need to sort of urgently discuss those issues um, uh, that we're going to be using it so much um so uh beyond that as i say we we have an open agenda we're going to be themes that that people on the call, I hope, or, uh, have uh, interest in and want to discuss. Um, and there's another theme that, uh, that I know that, that, that Philip and I have been asked to respond to just a couple of weeks in the last week or two, which is pandemic in general from the perspective of our uh, network, a set of comments is going to be submitted to uh, the Scottish Educational Review um, as a discussion um, to think about the pandemic. So, um, 
I don't know, uh, Philip, if you wanted to come in at this point to perhaps add any further uh, insights. <laughs> Well, no, no, not really. I think that the, the, the time might now be to um, ask if, well, to open the floor, really, and to start thinking about, um, or to start hearing from other people and think about, you know, what, what we might start to do with our network and plans for going forward. Um, David, are you happy that we do that? Just give me a thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's great. Okay. So I can only see a few people at a time on the um, screen uh, that I have. Um, so perhaps, I don't know if, uh, let me see. So David, do you have a, do you, can you see everyone as well or do you only see some people? I, I can see, I have to zoom up and down, but I can If, if you see everyone. the shared page, then you'll see everyone. There we go. There you go. Excellent. Okay. Oh, well, uh, in that case, we can we can open up the chat. Um, I can see that there's uh, already been some uh, discussion in the chat. If you want to uh, pose a question from this point on, if you want to just you know do a thumbs up or post something in the chat, we can uh, we can get things going that way. Mary. You're muted, Mary. Would you think it I've learned by now? I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, we're talking about the like, more localised networks. Do you, know, do you want to say a bit more about that? Are you thinking like local meaning east-west or local meaning, you know, Glasgow, Motherwell, Paisley, you know, whatever? Yes. Well, one of the things we spoke about when we first uh, started to, to, to discuss the, the, the network was the idea of being able to um, move around a bit within Scotland so that we would have, you know, um, events and meetings at various different places. So it wouldn't all necessarily ha happen in Glasgow just because David and I are in Glasgow. Um, that we'd be able to um, perhaps, you know, uh, I don't want to say go on tour, but, <laughs> you know, take the network around and at least meet with people and, and have... Uh, and re reach out to places that were um, less, less uh, well, not as close to, you know, the University of Glasgow, the University of Strathclyde. David, do you have anything that would say about, lo you know, this idea about lo local or more local or? I think he might have, is he frozen for everyone else? He's frozen for me. Um, I'm, how, I'm coming in and out, I think. You so are, yes. Maybe I'll let you, I mean, basically what you said makes sense. I think that, you know, our, our idea is that this would provide an open, an open forum for people so that, you know, it wouldn't just really reflect, it wouldn't just reflect what David and I are interested in. It would provide a place that people could, um, you know, uh, use to, to network with other colleagues and to be supported. You know that David and I, and and of course Sarah would be the would be a, a way to um, facilitate that. And of course we're open minded as to, to how to do that. And as David was saying, when we started to discuss this, we were doing it in a cafe. Um, everything's changed since then. So again, thinking about ways that we can facilitate that now, um, would you know, in, in in these new circumstances, would be would be good as well. Philip, can I just jump in and say, from my perspective, certainly, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. it's a great idea. It's, I think it's a great idea uh, to set up a network. Um, I think that when it is needed, uh, I'm a, a third year PhD at University of Glasgow now, and my, my experience has been so far that um, the philosophy of education uh, needs something like this you know it, it, it kind of needs because the temptation is to i think particularly as a student uh is to spend an awful lot of time at the desk um because of the nature of what we're 
studying and the way that we and the way we're doing it. So um, and that can be quite a sort of uh, isolating experience. Um, and I think it's great to have uh, and, uh, isolating by the way, not even just because we're all socially distanced and everything. It's it's more to do with the nature of the philosophy of education itself. Um, uh, being desk based. So I think it's a great idea to set up uh, a network anyway, but particularly uh, during these times where it's just more difficult to see people. We can't go to the cafe, we can't, um, we can't gather in the way that it would be um, in normal times. So, uh, you know, well done and thank you to, uh, uh, to you, David. Great, thank you very much. Paul, I see Paul wants to come in. Yeah, hi everyone. It, it's a, a, a case that we've set this up as the as a as a network in the Scottish Education Research Association. But part of the reason for having these networks is yes to bring people together around Scotland. But it's also clear that what we want to do is extend out to the rest of the world as well. I mean, we do have a couple of people here from Canada at least, and I'm sure there are people from elsewhere as well. And we have been doing a lot of work in Sierra to extend our networks outwards. I mean, I've been doing a lot of work in, in the Nordic region and, and Rachel Shanks has been doing a lot of really good work in, in Ireland as well. Hi, Rachel. So um, I think it's, it's important that we um, make, it, make it clear that we, you know, we don't want this to be an isolating, introverted thing. We don't want it to become parochial. We want it to be outward looking. But I think it's also fair to say, and I think you raise a good point, Gary, is that not only can philosophy be, uh, and, and David said this as well, quite isolating, and theory as well can be quite isolating in that you often sit on your own doing your piece of work, but also it can be a bit kind of rarefied and, and people get a bit sort of scared to do it and it can get its own sort of traditions with things and, and people then shy away from it. And I think what we, and when I was involved in the conversations with, with David and, and Philip, one of the things that we were all keen to do was ensure that this sort of work becomes much more accessible. Um, and that doesn't imply any dumbing down or anything like that, but it implies that we actually demonstrate the reasons for philosophizing and theorizing and conceptualizing and how important they are. And that, as David rightly said earlier on, they don't sit over there somewhere and practice it over there, that the, the two are entwined. So it's a real opportunity for us to get together in, in what is a very friendly um, research organization. CIRA is a very, very friendly organization we welcome people in and, and if any of you have been to our conferences you'll know how friendly and how open it is and it's, you know, it's not at all like some of the bear pits you get around the world so i think it's important that we remember that outward looking but also that we remember that we want to you know create an accessible space for people to engage with this kind of work and, and uh, move their thinking and, and their connections and their collaborations forward Would anyone like to else to come? Yeah, can I speak? Yeah. Yes, absolutely, Stephen. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much, guys. Um, um, Paul does great work in the Nordic regions, and uh, Rachel does brilliant work in Ireland. I do groundbreaking work in England, which is really important place as well. Um, I. I we welcome this network enormously, and, and I, I really like what you've done. Um, you talk about theory and philosophizing, which I think is very clever, because I think many of us um, work with theories in different ways. And I think the idea of linking that up more explicitly with some of the philosophy is really, really important. Um, I think Paul's right. I think sometimes people back off a little from philosophy. Um, not that they don't understand it, they, they, they just find it maybe sometimes um, just a, a, a little either elitist or, or, or maybe just a bit esoteric and there's no reason for that, of course. Um, we should be looking at it much more carefully. So I, I'm really, really excited about this network and I think it's going to add a really um, interesting and fabulous dimension to CIRA and to our networks. Um, what I would like to see um, or hear is what your plans are for the next couple of years, the kind of things you'd like to do, the kind of themes you'd like to explore. I, th I found that last slide very interesting, but the kinds of things that you can contribute. Um, 
uh, the whole question of um, equity in education. Like, yeah, of course, because we often come at that from a, a sociological perspective, and it'd be very interesting to, to hear something deeper from a philosophical perspective. I and mean, we, we, you can tend, tend to get um, bogged down a wee bit with statistics and the way things are going. And at the moment, we've got a, a, a massive amount of interest in what were and what are the effects of COVID-19 on uh, school children, on the progress in schools. And for me, some of the things I'm looking at are things like digital exclusion, uh, food insecurity, but it would be good to stand back and get something deeper and more philosophical than that. So I'm really excited that you guys have started this up um, and really looking forward to the next couple of years. Well, that's great, Stephen. Thank you very much. Um, one of the things, you know, David's already mentioned is that uh, there's a, a conference that's been postponed on educational equity. So I'll let him speak to that. But certainly one of the things we, we're interested in, um, well, two things. The first is to um, pursue a publication. Uh, David mentioned a special edition of the journal. Um, so that's maybe something that we could think about, you know, those kind of themes that you mentioned there. But also, again, for a... a, a a, a session at the conference. Those are those are two things that we could perhaps do that would pick up in some of those themes. Um, David, do you want to come in on that? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, in, yeah, uh, thanks for. I mean, there's lots of comments in the chat as well yeah. that are going, going along, which which are quite inspiring. Um, but maybe I'll just uh, reflect for a second on the on the question of educational equity uh, as a particular. Uh, topic. It does seem to me that that's a really good example of something, a concept or a discussion, a discourse that's become so sort of embedded and so politicised and so uh, we, that we don't hear what, what we're saying anymore, um, uh, or should I say politicians and, and, and so forth. It's become, as you say, soci sociology has come to sort of dominate uh, the analysis to such an extent yep. that we we, we forget to ask ourselves what equity actually means. Uh, we, we, we don't consider uh, what the pandemic is showing us about the limits of schools or institutions to influence something we're calling the attainment gap. Um, so as, 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 uh, it's a very complex issue, but I think something that theory and philosophy absolutely has uh, something, something to to, to say to. Um, I also wanted to just respond or mention or I saw a few, a few bit, a little while back a walk and talk hill walk from Gary um, and I think it's uh, you know sort of reflective of a couple of people mentioning doing something on down in Dumfries or different places. Um, I mean walking as an activity has a a rich philosophical heritage and there's been plenty of people not just write about it but actually do it and uh, I think that would be an exciting prospect to 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 find a, a sort of socially distanced way of going for a, a hill walk which is a meander that, that leads to some kind of space for conversation as well uh, so maybe that's something I'm going to think about too um, how we can walk together yeah, I mean, one of the conferences I attended over the summer was about, um, and unfortunately, of course, on Zoom, but it was about uh, evolution, or it was related to evolutionary questions in, in connection to teaching. And it's certainly something that I've been thinking about um, in relation to some of the archaeology and anthropology work that, uh, that I'm interested in following up is about the wider concerns about, you know, biology and evolution and ultimately a, 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 a kind of naturalistic perspective how that relates to some of the questions that we pursue under various different theoretical or through different theoretical lenses in, in education. So some of the things I'm quite interested in would be following up on on some of those more um, those more broad uh, philosophical questions about, you know, um, the kinds of the kinds of theoretical debates we get into uh, in, in philosophy of education and how that relates to other uh, areas within um, the social sciences and humanities. So, picking up on Stephen's point about sociology and perhaps moving, moving the debate into you know areas with anthropology and and psychology and and that kind of thing as well to, yeah. to really kind of try and get a. a, a, a I don't think this. I don't think it's a case of you know a, a, a 
you know, a new paradigm or anything like that necessarily, but, but getting the paradigms to talk to each other and to see how um, to see how you know we're we're coming up maybe some of the same questions but from different different angles. So that's perhaps something like a th you know something like we could have a themed a themed session at the conference or something like that on, on, on something along those lines or we could pursue um, if not on that area but maybe uh, you know connected areas we could pursue lines of uh, grant grant capture perhaps to to enable certain um, forums to operate. Indeed, we could even do something along the lines of, you know, like a, a themed get together, whether it's a themed Zoom event, you know, in the current circumstances, you know, where everyone who registers is interested in a particular topic, or we indeed have something like a, a themed walk where, <laughs> where we meet up and, uh, you know, all, have all read a particular article or, or something along those lines, you know. So I see someone talking about psychoanalysis as well, great history between oh, Paul. Um, philosophy, psychology, psychoanalysis. Yeah, exactly. These these kind of things. Anyone else want to come in? David, I I, I don't want to steal your thunder, but you'd mentioned um, I think some grant ideas as well. Yeah, um, <clears throat> is this is my connection okay? Yeah, you're good. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, well, I, I, I think uh, we all have our particular <laughs> the the we prefer that I've railroad that has. my sort of eye on the Political Society of Great Britain and uh, what is it? Society for Educational Studies. Um, there's been quite a lot of work recently literature and education. And I'm particularly interested in the forms of uh, self-development or self-formation um, that take place through literature or in relation to literature. Um, now, those literatures might be religious literatures, where we uh, where we see, for instance, the explicitly educational intention of of a particular scripture, Sermon on the Mount, or or we might talk about um, you know Bildungsroman. Um, Tech, Jane Eyre, or or Star Wars, or School of Rock, all all sorts, of, or or, um, or Dante's Divine Comedy. I was just uh, looking at this as an example. Plato's Republic, Hegel's uh, Phenomenology of Spirit, all all sorts of texts uh, uh, lend themselves to being read educationally, um, and as a great interest in, uh, I suppose, enriching what we think. Where education is through, let's say, a, a range of literature. I know there's quite a bit of work that's gone on already on this, and I think it's something I am working on for for a bid uh, right now uh, to think about uh, the, the 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 role of uh, literature and the intentions of the authors in the development, the educational development of the reader. Um, so that's just something that I'm interested in, and I think it reflects or relates to some interests, as I say, among UK and I think internationally. There's lots of interest in in literature um, uh, in different ways. And I know uh, again that speaking to Philip, that we've we've got a mutual interest in fairy tales and uh, childhood uh, literature, early childhood literature, what sometimes called didactic literature. I've also developed a, developed a, a new module with Katya um, uh, and uh, Alan at the Strathclyde on, on education in film and literature. So, so I think it's, it's uh, really, really important to, to give consideration, uh, really important to give consideration to the diverse spaces in which uh, education uh, presents itself. 
and I think, as I say, the, the literature is, is something that uh, I'm going to pursue. And if anyone's interested, please get in touch. Um, I'd be interested to have conversations or maybe ha host something around that. Um, it's, it's rather ill-formed at the moment, but I hope to have given you some idea of, of where that's going. Yeah, I, I think that's right. And I see also uh, Jonathan Frost posted about uh, picking up on the, the point about evolution and psych he's mentioning it, mentioning it in connection to psychology, but also um, issues to do with memory, prejudice, stress, mental health and many other areas. I think that connects to what we were saying earlier on about, about wanting to be broad, you know, not wanting to necessarily, um, you know, try to try to shoehorn things into a particular theoretical um, you know, theoretical framework. You know, we, we want to we want to be as, as as intellectually open as we can be to and um you know because not only is that something that's i think enriching in and of itself but also it might help us uh, reach out from the network and also potentially pull in um sources of funding if we if we are uh open in that kind of way yeah and i think it's really important that, that indeed we 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 don't become sort of too if i can put it this way too philosophical in the sense of pursuing a particular interest in Heidegger or whatever it might be, um, you know, there there is a, a risk that 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 education uh, that 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 we try and sort of apply our favourite theory, our favourite philosopher to a sort of educational discipline, um, and I think it's perhaps the wrong way around. Rather, we sort of think of, we, we would prefer to think what what are the educational questions and how do theorist philosophers contribute to reflect on uh, those educational questions. Yeah, I think that's that's right, and it, that I think also leaves it, you know, or makes it much more clear how um, practice is involved as well. Is that we're not we don't we don't want to set uh, as we've said we don't want to separate these things out. We want to see how questions arise within within um, well two things on that. I suppose practice, but also unrelated to you know specifically someone's you know uh, career, if you if you, if you like, you know, to see how education and and its questions of learning arise within. You know the, the unfolding of a human life more generally. You know we think that uh, these are certainly areas that, that we can we can start to we can start to focus in on. I mean, one of the things David mentioned, and I've I've um, I've got the uh, the email here uh, from Sira. Uh, the idea about a a publication in the Scottish Educational Review speculative discussion um, of uh, the impact of COVID-19 on all spheres of life and what, the, the, might the, and what this might mean for education. Um, so networks have been invited to submit a position paper uh, with the title, What Might the COVID Pandemic Mean for um, the Theory and Philosophy of Education Network? And really, we're, uh, you know, this is something I thought we should, we should bring to this event today. Um, the papers that see are flexible, on the, the structure of the papers, uh, but they're thinking in the region of 500 to 800 words, and the statements themselves would be um, brought together in, in a publication. So that's something I thought we could bring to, to the discussion today as a very concrete thing that we could look to do as a result of today's meeting. David, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that as well. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. So, I mean, I, I was just making a few notes about 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 uh, how our network might uh, respond to uh, the pandemic as as the call went out just recently. Um, and, I, and and the first thing that did strike me is indeed related to the question of educational equity and the attainment gap and how how uh, how it, it shines a light. The conditions that we find ourselves in shines a light on on let's say the problems and the, the, the limitations, I suppose, of, of educational institutions as, as levers of social change. Um, clearly they have an influence because the gap becomes worse. Uh, that's what all the evidence at the moment is suggesting that things are getting worse uh, when schooling is, is not, not around, not available, um, but that, is not the same as saying that schools can close the attainment gap. So I was just reflecting on that uh, as, a, as a theme, as a discussion that I thought might be relevant to, to, um, 
to what we could say about about uh, about the pandemic and i was also reflecting on some work uh around the concept of the school as a space of equality so the idea of of jan maskelein and martin simons a uh, couple of people in belgium has been that um that 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 school is a space uh, in which one's identity is is sort of equalized where we become um or, or our, um, uh, our social context is, is suspended when we enter into school. Um, and I think that's a more helpful model because it draws attention to, to what is possible through schooling in relation to the attainment gap. In other words, it can stop the widening, but it can't close. And I think that's a really important <laughs> distinction. But anyway, that, that, those are just some thoughts that probably would, would take me some time to, to unpack it a bit more, but maybe now... Well, I, yeah, I mean, I think that one of the things that you know, um, certainly the the net the the Scottish Educational, Educational Review call is open. Um, so, the, you know, even to the extent of flexibility over the authorship of the papers, you know, single author, multiple authors. So, I think that, that David and I would, would welcome expressions of interest um, from everyone today. You know, if you would like to be involved in in um, in, in creating. You know uh, our network's response to that. Uh, you know, essentially, David and I will probably say something along the lines of what we'll, or something similar to what we've already said and outline as to what the network's about. You know, but um, it would be nice to have uh, multiple voices represented through the network, so that we're starting off in the way that we would like, and that is to to create a forum for 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 people to be heard and to to share their ideas. Um, so uh, you know, I think what well, well in that sense, it may be an idea to, to perhaps email uh, David and I um, t together after this event. Uh, I, I can leave at the end. I can put up the shared screen again and show you the the, the email addresses. But um, that might be the first way to go forward, just to, to 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 get in touch. I can put into the chat in a second the, the aspects of the call, and then if you wanted to have a look at that, and then email. Uh, David and I, um, and to see whether or not you'd like to to contribute and what you'd like, you know, roughly what we would like to see, or the area rather. Hello. Yes. Can, 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 I, can I make a a, a counter suggestion, which I yes. think which I think you'll like. Go on. I think I think what what Seer wants is a short input from all of the networks and they're going to draw it together it's it's they've said 800 words maximum so okay. it doesn't really it doesn't give you a, a huge amount of scope and it doesn't really give you a huge amount of scope for multiple authorship however here's here's an alternative suggestion um cena also has what's called a research bulletin which is published maybe twice or three times a year now i know that the editor lorna hamilton from the university of edinburgh is always really keen that there's a themed issue. So, so my counter suggestion is, uh, I think I actually think just the two of you should do the, the the few hundred words for the seer thing. Why not suggest to her that this network will, as part of its kind of um, um, launching events, take on the bulletin uh, with a special edition on theory and philosophy, and then people from from this particular session and others can contribute to that uh, and the two of you could organize that and that means that people could write a wee bit more um, mm -hmm. really interesting and by the way the bulletin is free it's open access it's it's not behind a paywall or anything it's free access to everybody it means you you, you could really have a, an excellent series of articles discussing what theory and philosophy is all about and where it could go that sounds good steve no that's that's a very good point uh david shall we pursue that that sounds great. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I do like that suggestion very much. No, that's, thank you, Stephen. That's brilliant. Um, I'll follow that up with you, Stephen. I'll email you about the, the, the getting the details and we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll take yeah, that forward. I, 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 the, you know, it doesn't need to be a quick lead-in time. It can, you know, you, you can volunteer to do it in a three or four mm -hmm. months or something, or certainly before the end of the year. Yeah. Great. No, that's ideal. Yeah, I mean, when I uh, when I first started in, in my uh, university career I, I, I hosted a, an event called what's the use of philosophy of education um, 
and it might be that uh, we we want to just invite conversation discussion about what the uh, what the use of theory and philosophy is um, or, or, I mean so it's obviously a, a, a silly question because we are doing it whether we like it or not but um, a provocative question perhaps um, but anyway it's something to consider for the research bulletin as a theme See, just on that point, uh, David, a, a question I had in mind about, more about, this may be, may be a bit of a curveball, um, but more a question about the use of a network such as this. Um, and I'm thinking more along the lines of, I think everything that, that's discussed so far has been great in terms of doing some sort of collaboration and a, a submission for special issues, um, etc. But I'm also thinking along the lines of um, public engagement and a kind of uh, public philosophy approach mm -hmm. to the philosophy of education, if that makes sense. Um, I think given, given the times that we're in um, and given the, the strength of a network like this, it seems like a kind of an obvious opportunity to um, maybe do something a bit more um, interventionist, if that's the right word, and to try and open up um, a conversation about the, the nature of schools, the nature of education, and these kind of bigger questions to a wider forum and to uh, use this network as a kind of kickstart uh, to something along the lines of that, whether it's um, an online event or, or something, I don't know, but um, maybe we could put our heads together yeah. to come up with some ideas. No, absolutely. No, no, that's, that's good. Yeah, I, uh, it's interesting. Um, the, the, uh, the public engagement aspect is something that we had particularly in mind when we were thinking about the equity conference, re reframing educational equity. And the first keynote was, is going to be, I, still, I believe it still is going to be on the first day, uh, Gert Biester. Um, and that's going to be a public lecture, a public engagement lecture. Um, and he's, he's one of those people that sort of uh, nicely bridges, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of interest, let's say, um, to try and open up indeed the discussion uh, between philosophers, educationalists, the theorists of education and so forth. So, yeah, uh, that, that was just um, in relation to that event. But I agree with you. Um, Public philosophy, uh, public engagement is something that, that is is certainly close to our interests. So I think uh, we absolutely can continue on with that. Thanks, Gary. In some ways, actually having a, a forum on Zoom like this, uh, you know, is is a way we can bring in people, um, you know, much um, much more widely. Rachel has her hand up in the. Hi. Thanks. Hi. Um, I just wanted to mention uh, something that I think has become much more important over the last few months, and that is that rather than just inviting people and leaving it open and imagining that we've got this level playing field, that we make a concerted effort that we have diversity of people and opinions involved in any publication or work. Um, now, obviously, not everybody has their, you know, video on, but um, you know, from the people that I can, you know, uh, see, we, you know, and and it's a reflection of, you know, society in Scotland. I realise most people here are based in Scotland, but it is a very white uh, Zoom meeting, and it's how to ensure that. Um, you know, it's it's not the same voices or similar voices that are being, uh, you know, given the opportunity to step forward and take the opportunities, and that there's maybe a wee bit of uh, seeking out people to make sure that that um, we um, do have that equity and that equality of opportunity uh, for early career researchers, but also to to ensure that we don't continue the uh, whiteness of academia. No, good point, Rachel. I, I mean, I'm happy to hear about any ways in which, or any particular groups that we could we could do that uh, with and through, you know, no, absolutely. But I, say, I mean, certainly it's something we can do in our own institutions, if it, you 
seems easy enough, David, that you know we can send around emails and, and do that kind of thing. But but ways in which ways to target uh, particular groups, networks, absolutely. Please let me know. Or let us know. Yeah, um, I mean, there, it, I, I'm not sure if if if, if uh, thanks, Rachel. I'm not sure if uh, you were meaning quite as as widely as this, but but I, um, it, uh, there is a colleague, or should, should I say, he, he recently passed away, a, a colleague who set up the African Philosophy of Education Network, um, Ellie uh, Garvey, who who I knew quite well through the PSGB network and uh, recently he passed away I'm, I'm sorry to say in fact uh, it was kind of a shock and uh, we've sent a message to PSUB members um, but that that re resonates with the general um, uh, work within PSUB in particular on the committee on race and ethnicity to look scrupulously at how we can you know develop more diverse more engaged more supportive cultures um yeah it's it's a real challenge um yeah. because indeed the conversations tend to reflect themselves well i mean it, yeah indeed I mean, and it could be one of, it could in fact be something that we, we actually pursue as a as a as a themed uh event or a themed um Addition of of a, of a bulletin or, or or indeed a journal or something along those lines that it could be something that we you know we consciously decide to action ourselves as a group. You know ways in which that can occur. I mean I think um, Alana made a very good point about um, the fact that we have graduate students from around the world studying here. You know we 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 do have the, the people are here and it's a case of, as Alana says, getting them out of the periphery. And I think indeed a lot a lot of our interests are um, or a lot of our networks also reach around the world. I mean, we have colleagues in Chile, in Brazil, um, in South, Af South Africa, in India. Um, and I, it's, it's definitely something that I think Paul mentioned it at the start earlier on in the meeting that's um, looking both within and beyond our borders is, is certainly something uh, we encourage. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not, just noticing the time. It's uh, coming up for 10, 10 to 6, and I think we're going to draw things to a close at 6 o'clock. Um, so, just for the last uh, ten minutes or so, if there's any other points we want to, to raise at the moment. Actually, I was just going to say to everyone who is in here, um, you know, because I realise there are some 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 students, you know, that if people, you know, I'm happy. Um, you know, people can just search for me at Aberdeen, Rachel Shanks, you know, if people want to email me, you know, if they're a wee bit tentative or they've got a draft abstract or anything like that, I just thought, because um, people are saying, well, how can we help? So I just thought I would uh, say that I'm happy to help anyone who wants, maybe, you know, from a different institution, they, they know that um, then it's sort of a confidential um, uh, situation. Yeah. I've seen also a comment about types of educators and learners um, are being considered valid voices. I think that's certainly, you know, certainly something that we would want to promote here. That uh, you know, we it's not exclusively a, a university-based um, forum. Indeed, you know, everyone's welcome, and certainly, you know, with the issue of ed of equity, is you know, everyone is considered equally as, um, you know, equally as uh, welcome and will be listened to in exactly the, the that, that kind of spirit of equity with that spirit of equity. Philip, can I, there's, there's a yeah, mini I think chat line going on here about um, about inclusion of, mm. of doctoral and ED students. And I think, I think there should be a real strong invitation. We've, we've got so many talented and gifted PhD and ED students. And, I, and I'm going to say something really controversial. Huh? Oh, Babying them, for God's sake, intelligent people. We need to invite them. They, they're not sit and join our net, network um, as people who are off the page. We need to invite them up front. They need to contribute up front. We need to tap into their energy, their talents, their gifts. And just, just even more uh, controversial, why is it when we have conferences, we never ever see a final year PhD student as a keynote? who surely must have some really important data to share with us. 
Good point, Stephen. Thank you. I know it's Angela Curley also had her hand up. Hi. Um, it was just simply about extending the, the invitation. I'm a modern studies teacher, but I'm an associate tutor um, with the MEDUC 5 as well. And it's made me kind of put the two things together about being at the university and experiencing access, which is where I got access to, to this forum from, and actually being a modern studies teacher in a, a school in a, a, a deprived area in Scotland. But it's made me think a lot about, about my colleagues in theory to practice, philosophy to practice. But I think very often in the school you're so SQA driven that you forget a lot about the actual philosophy behind education because you're caught up in everything that's going on within a school. I'm also a guidance teacher, so I have mm. all the social and economic issues going on as well. And I just think it would be good to reach out to local authorities, to maybe networks of um, teachers within local authorities to actually gauge opinion and support possibly from them to get them to reflect in their practice and also think about things like the philosophy of education and different theories that they're actually um, putting forward. I just think it would re-engage or ignite a lot more interest from, um, from a teaching point of view within secondary yeah. and also primary, but definitely secondary. Absolutely, Angela, thank you very much for that. No, that's, that's, that's true and I see a couple of points of agreement in the chat as well. Okay, so we're coming up to the last uh, last five minutes or so. I think we've got time for maybe one more one more question or comment or uh, point to be made. If anyone would like, would like to come in, I'm just scanning through to see if there's anything. Oh, I see also a point about providing professional development for university instructors and teachers. I mean that that's certainly something that you know we're working to talk more about. Um. I have to say, one of the things I've discovered is that hosting, I, I've never done it. <laughs> this is my first time at hosting a, a Zoom meeting is harder than it looks. I have a, a, new, a newfound sympathy for all the hosters of meetings that I've attended and trying to keep your eyes in the chat and, and everything is, is, uh, is not as easy as it looks. Well, listen, thank you so much to everyone who's, who's um, contributed today. That was, I, you know, that was really great. Um, I have found a lot of things to think about as a result of this and uh, really do look forward to connecting with all of you again. I would reiterate the point about, you know, picking up Stephen's point about contributing to that, to that bulletin. Please do, I'll, I'll share my screen again in a second with our contact details, but please do um, email David and myself uh, to uh, register your interest for that. David, I'll hand over to you to say the last few words. Well, just to, just to sort of uh, reiterate what you've been saying, thank, thank you to everybody. Um, I mean, if, if you're a doctoral student or any kind of student and you're interested in theory and philosophy, and indeed, as Rachel and others have said already, you just want someone to chat about uh, certain questions or you just want to um, chew the fat, uh, please get in touch uh, uh, with me as well. I'm very happy just to, to, to just chat. Um, yeah. Uh, we, we've got lots of half-baked ideas or semi-baked ideas or maybe a bit more baked and underbaked. Um, so, so please get involved and, uh, and um, you know, let us know what, what your priorities are uh, for, uh, for this kind of meeting and um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll try and make it happen and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at ne a network meeting um, soon. Super. Thank you very much, David, and for Philip as well. Um, thank you, everybody, for contributing this afternoon. Details for CIRA are found at the bottom of the slide, and we'll hopefully see you again another CIRA Connect soon. Thank you, Angela. Thanks, Angela. Thank you.